Hi, in this video we will discuss the concept of single photonometers and why they are the key source of quantum light. In the race to build the technologies of tomorrow, unbreakable encryption, ultra-fast quantum computers and ultra-sensitive sensors, quantum light is a key player. But what exactly is quantum light and why do we need specialized sources to produce it? In current communication technologies, we use electronics or classical light, like ordinary computers and optical fibers. But this can be slow and easy to track. Imagine trying to send information using light. In the classical world, we use lasers or LEDs, which are bright beams carrying lots of photons. But in the quantum world, what we try is to encode information using single photons, a quantum of light, which is faster than electrons and more robust to external interferences. For example, for applications like quantum key distribution, where two people want to exchange encrypted keys that no one else can read, security relies on sending information using these single photons. If anyone tries to intercept the photon, the laws of quantum physics ensure the intrusion can be detected. In particular, the no-cloning theorem ensures that one arbitrary unknown quantum state cannot be made into an identical copy. Therefore, an external eavesdropper will modify the communication channel, revealing their presence. Beyond encryption, quantum light can be used in a lot of applications, including quantum computing using photons as qubits, quantum teleportation by transferring information between particles, and even quantum sensing, detecting tiny changes in fields or forces. But to do all this, we need precise, reliable single photon emitters, and that's where single photon sources come in. Now, what is quantum light? Most light we encounter daily, like sunlight, light bulbs, lasers, is made of many photons often arriving randomly in clumps. Quantum light, on the other hand, behaves very differently. When you look closely at an ideal single photon source, you see that photons don't come in pairs or bunches. They are well separated in time, and they come one after the other at a regular rate. We call this behavior anti-bunching, and it's a signature of truly quantum light. It's also reflected in something called subpoisonian statistics, a fancy way of saying less randomness than classical light. That is, if a source exhibits anti-bunching behavior, the probability of having two photons emitted at the same time is close to zero. A Poissonian distribution of light, as that of a laser, behaves at random. The time separation between the emitted photon can be any, and all the delays have the same probability. For example, in a laser beam, it's equally probable having two photons emitted together, with a delay equal to zero, than separated 10 milliseconds. This delay in the photon emission is characterized by the second-order autocorrelation function, G2, which gives us the properties of the photon statistics of a source. G2 can be measured in the lab by means of a Humbry brown and Tris setup that consists fundamentally of a beam splitter and two single photon detectors. This fairly simple optical system is used to measure the delay between the photons emitted. When a photon arrives to the beam splitter, it follows one optical path or the other with equal probability. Then, it is detected by one of the single photon detectors, and we can know the exact time of arrival. When we compare the times of arrival between both detectors, we can obtain the delays between one photon and the next that has been measured. Antibunching behavior can be demonstrated when the delay zero is significantly less probable than the rest of delays, and ideally is equal to zero. In terms of G2, this is translated as G2 at delay equal to zero is close to zero and D2 for any other delay is bigger than that. The value of the second order correlation function at delay zero gives us how good a single photon source is. The closer to zero, the better. This function also gives us information about the emission rate of the source. The Humbry Brown and Twist setup original intention was to measure the diameter of stars as a light interferometer, but now is the most common implementation to measure the autocorrelation function of a photon source, and it is widely used in quantum correlation experiments. Now that we know how to demonstrate that we have a single photon emitter in our lab, let's see some real examples of these quantum light sources. While it's possible to use attenuated lasers to approximate single photons, there's always a small chance that they emit two or more photons at once. And even though the intensity can be very low, the statistics of a laser is always Poissonian, which can be a big security risk in quantum communications. That's why real single photon sources are so important. Some common examples of single photon sources are bit per atoms, single molecules, and solid state emitters. In particular for solid state emitters, let's talk about quantum dots and color centers.
Quantum dots are tiny semiconductor crystals, just a few nanometer size, that trap electrons and holes in a confined space. A bound state between an exciting electron and the hole that leaves behind is called an exciton. When an exciton recombines, that is, the electron falls back to the ground state, it emits a single photon. The electrons can be excited with light, like a laser, or applying a voltage. Quantum dots are often referred to as artificial atoms because their nanoscale dimensions lead to quantum confinement, resulting in discrete quantized energy levels, analogous to those found in natural atoms. The size can be engineered to emit light at a specific wavelengths, making them tunable. They are also quite bright, efficient, and can be integrated within optical circuits. Additionally, in last years, researchers are improving the behavior at room temperatures, making them a favorite for on-demand single photons, especially in photonics quantum technologies. Nitrogen vacancy centers, one of the most successful examples of color centers, are tiny defects inside a diamond crystal, where a nitrogen atom sits next to a missing carbon atom. These defects behave like isolated quantum systems, emitting light when excited by a laser. NV centers are fabricated by introducing nitrogen in the production of the diamond crystal, using high temperature and pressure. Using irradiation of high energy particles, Impurities and vacancies are created in the diamond substrate. At high temperatures close to 700 degrees Celsius, vacancies can move inside the crystal and are captured by the nitrogen atoms, creating the nitrogen vacancy centers. The fabrication process includes annealing, chemical vapor deposition, plasma synthesis, and other complex techniques. One of the most important features of nitrogen vacancy centers is that they work at room temperature, can be manipulated with magnetic fields, and are incredibly stable. Envy centers are used not just for quantum communication, but also for quantum sensing, like measuring magnetic fields with atomic precision. Now, what's next for quantum light? Despite the promising advances, single photonometers still face some challenges, like making them small, cheap, and scalable, emitting at the right wavelengths for fiber optic networks or A communications, and coupling them efficiently into optical circuits. Researchers are working on hybrid solutions, combining different materials and techniques to build scalable quantum networks, like developing quantum light sources on chips, bringing quantum technology closer to everyday devices. Single photonometers have the potential to be the key enablers of quantum technologies. Whether it's secure communications, next-generation computing, or ultra-sensitive sensors, the ability to generate and control quantum light at the single photon level is a crucial requirement for progress across these fields.